<sighs> I've had some time to process the fucking result. Man United 4, or well, Man United 4, Crystal Palace 4, United fucking 0. And um, I'm still processing it in a way. Maybe I'm not really over it. It's still something that I'm still having to kind of wrangle my brain around because I still can't figure out how we let a pretty... I wouldn't say they're ordinary, but they didn't really have to do much to beat us. That's a really concerning bit about the loss against Crystal Palace. They didn't really have to do much to beat us. They really didn't have to do much. Um, and we essentially crumbled. As soon as the first goal went in, I didn't really see us having any way back in terms of rescuing the match. It wasn't ever going to happen. And it just felt like it was inevitable. It was going to be a bit of a drudging. Now, some people are suggesting that this is always on the cards. We had this coming for a long, long time. We kind of put it off for a while. We were able to get some jammy results that we probably never deserved, even though some of our fans would like to tell you differently and like to celebrate wins, even when we play terribly, as if there's something to really celebrate and really get behind. But if you know, you know, if you're a fan of the club, you've been supporting the club for a long time, you know what our standards are. And you also know that, you know, depending on the competition in the league, we're currently not really there where we need to be. So if we want to get back to where we need to be, we need to be beating teams in this. We need to be winning games in a certain style. We can't just be banging out the results, grinding them out and hoping to, you know, have a team ahead of us slip up. Not going to be happening. They're all playing with style. They're all playing with, you know, um, you know, they're all playing with a sense of control, dominance and just pure attacking prowess that we're really struggling to match. But forget all that attacking stuff, just the defending. The defending alone is really scary because we had, we've had we had a few injuries at the back. Clearly, that's not going to help. But the way that we capitulated, our lack, to, our lack of or the, our inability to stay compact, our inability to kind of, you know, cover up our deficiencies, our inability to kind of see where the flow of the game, the momentum was going and kind of shut certain things down. Like I think... Olise being the best example. Olise obviously was the star player for Crystal Palace. He scored two and just was on fire the whole entire match. It kind of felt a little bit like an audition, like because, you know, we've been linked heavily with Olise. And I felt like he was aware of that and was trying to remind the brass at United to, you know, sanction a signature for him because, you know, he's obviously a really good player. But I felt like the Olise thing. It was pretty obvious that he was on fire. That he was obviously had his tail up. We should have shut that down early. Someone should have came in the back of him, took him out, and really kind of put him off and sort of like you know disturb his equilibrium to some extent. Instead, we gave him all the space on the field. He was pirouetting. He was doing flick passes and stuff. He was controlling balls with his instep. Like he was taking the piss. To be completely honest, and the fact that no one really put the boot in him kind of shows that a lot of those players kind of gave up. I remember there was actually a section towards the second. No, there was a section just before the first half, where the players were on the side of the pitch about to come on, and you know, have if anyone's played sport, anyone's played any sort of like organized sport, you know that look in the people's, you know that look in someone's eyes when they don't want to be there. And I, when I checked my stream, I was watching it. I could see in the eyes of United players, they didn't really want to be there. They were super over it already. Um, they were, you know, basically defeated before the second half had even started. And I think by that point, we we're only 2-0 down. So that goes to show that the players had essentially thrown a towel in. So obviously, that's very concerning. But to go back to the defensive thing, this has always been my issue with Eric Ten Hag. And I think this has been one of the saddest things about his tenure. I, like a lot of fans, was really eager to get Eric Ten Hag at United, right? We saw what he did at Ajax. We saw that attacking brand of football and a lot of us fans, myself included, never thought Eric Ten Hag was going to come to United and win us the Premier League or win us the Champions League. No one with brains thought that. But what we did think, he was going to come in and he was going to build a squad full of technically proficient, you know, football players and get us playing in a certain way that would maybe lead the, let, you know, lay the groundwork for the next person to come in and then take us to the next level. That's what I think most people were thinking. Instead, he came in under the remit of having to win every single game, which then made him play all our best players every single game. But our best players aren't used to playing that level of intensity every single game. They're also shit cunts, the most of them, Luke Shaw and a few other people included. So they tend to get injured often. 
So the players that he relies upon to get the grind out the results, to get us further up the table, to win cups and stuff or whatever else, they also get injured. So they end up letting him down and then he ends up having to rely on players that he clearly doesn't fancy. And one of the things that I don't like about Erickson Hogg is that he clearly doesn't like to rotate his players. He likes to stick with a core group of like 13 players or so. But we don't have the quality, even in the 13, to sustain that level of performance. They don't have it in them. So when you then have a player injured from that 13 and you have to rely on one of the subs who hasn't been given any love or hasn't been shown that they're an important part of the squad and they obviously haven't had the practice, don't have the form, it's a recipe for disaster. So this was always kind of on the books and always on the cards, but it is a bit more, it hurts a bit more when it's against a, I wouldn't say an average team, but you know, a mediocre team in the Premier League with a new manager who hasn't even been there six months. They've already got a style of play. Um, they already spotted our weaknesses. They took advantage of them and they won the game, you know, fair and square, to be honest. So I don't really have any complaints. The only complaints I have in terms of the game itself was obviously our individual player performances. I thought Andre Onana, um, you know, Andre Onana might be one of our worst, you know, number ones we've had in a very long time. I thought there was at least two goals from that flurry of four that he conceded that he could have saved. Even towards the end, there was a shot. I forgot who it was from. It might have been from Olise. Or it might have been from somebody else. Uh, maybe maybe Eze, I'm not too sure. But there was a shot towards the end that would have made it 5-0 that hit the post. And Onana was, was rooted to the ground as if it was some like really good shot. That was really annoying. All of it was just annoying. The whole thing was annoying. I hated the whole entire game. Um, I wanted it to end sooner rather than later. And if anything, it's a good thing that we're ending the season like this. Because it all but guarantees that we won't play in Europe next season. And I feel like a lot of our fans are really delusional and a lot of them think just because we get into Europe, it kind of, you know, negates our issues. So I think when we don't get into Europe, it sort of wakes up the club, the fan base in general to see how far we've fallen. And when we struggle to get in Europe again next season, which I think we will, it will maybe wake up people to realise that we are so far away from where we need to be that, you know, just signing a player or just getting a marquee manager hiring isn't going to fix things. Like, the issues with United are deep-rooted. And a lot of it has to do with the players that are currently at the club. A lot of those players need to be sold, need to be moved on immediately. Whether or not that will happen is another thing. But, you know, there's a long road ahead of us for United. I don't really see any real light at the end of the tunnel. I'm not going to lie. Um, the only light at the end of the tunnel that I thought was going to happen was if the Glazers sold the club in its entirety. They never did. They ended up fucking, you know, pulling a farce on us and saying they went to sell the club and then turning around and changing their mind so fuck them so yeah we're fucked essentially we are fucked for the longest time ever um nothing really is going to change and we have to hope and pray that you know a miracle happens where we get another Sax ferguson maybe the glazers helicopter crashes somewhere but if that doesn't happen we are well and truly fucked and no one's gonna save us so let's just you know enjoy the ride as we can and kind of go from there but united lost 4-0 to crystal palace um again not surprised don't really fucking care fuck the players fuck the club fuck everything about that fucking football team and you know the sooner the season ends the better to be honest the sooner the season ends the better to be honest but hey what do i know absolutely nothing you know absolutely nothing cool moving on from that one 